So we're streaming now. <laughs> Almost want to put a little um, a little uh, HDMI external screen that's a bit bigger just right here, so you're still looking at the camera. Yeah. I'll just open this up a bit. <coughs> so okay, twelve fifty nine. So we're we're pretty much live. Same preview. We changed it from Ashes back. Okay, I'll, I'll basically do the sign on when we hit 1 pm. For those that are pedantic and just join right at the exact moment when you're actually starting. Let's get some of these to your eyelids. I feel like catering to those people. No, don't do that. Margaret did that and. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, actually, it actually hurts when you pull them off. It's very distracting as well when you turn around and there she is wearing <laughs> googly eyes. Yeah. The bit that I find the most distracting is the time delay to the video at the bottom. Yeah. There's a few seconds behind. It's quite off putting. Me too. We're actually live now. So, um, basically, hello everybody. I'm Brooke, uh, Brooke Waters, and this is Lincoln. We are um, from Stickman Media, and of course, continuing our uh, casting of the development of After the Light, our um, zombie survival horror game. Um, and today what we've decided to do is actually show you some of the levels uh, that we've got. Now unfortunately technology has been a bit of a beast to us here so um, uh, having looked at this movie uh, that's playing in the background, that would be playing in the background if I turned it on, uh, uh, previously we've discovered that it's actually really really dark so we're going to do the best we can it might be that in the future we try and find a way to make it brighter on the screen because what you're looking at there is the brook with a vr headset on looking around inside the game and obviously the 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 window on the screen is what he's seeing but it, it's only a half screen window and it's a little bit dark on the screen so, uh, i wonder if we can blow that up in any way does anybody know how to use uh, obs that way can we actually increase the size of that it must window? Must be the same. Like normally, you would go to like a view menu and go zoom in, or crop in, or something like that. I'm not sure what about the view menu at the top of that. Can you actually go zoom in on shop? At the view menu. Definitely, in the future, we need to record only the active window, and not the whole screen. Yeah. No, that was that was definitely a mistake. <clears throat> but anyway. Rook, um, rookie mistakes. Uh, yes, because we're new to it. Um, so if you can see what's going on in the background, uh, we're actually in some of the first levels in the in the game. Um, or you can see me. I've got a obviously a very advanced weapon there because I'm able to mow down zombies uh, as though I've got a machine gun. Um, but you can see we're in a moonlit level, so the colour scheme is primarily. Um, you know, blues and greys, and um, there's a little bit of greenery, but not much, and some um, some dark blue water. <coughs> um. So the first, this first zone, like you were saying, being the moonlit zone, is the idea is there's shafts of light breaking through the roof, so you're just under the surface. It is um, quite shallow to the ground, so there could be little holes in the roof, and there could be roots poking through, and shafts of moonlight that are kind of dappled light that are creating pools of light where vegetation might be growing that kind of thing and as you move deeper into the catacombs it will the whole mood will change okay i just had an idea that might actually help us here we might be able to zooming in might be able to zoom in on that um no normally it's a bit like a view menu but Zoom, there we go. Full zoom. Zoom, two to one, double. It's slightly bigger. But is that only doing it there or was it not doing it down there? Well, it should be doing it. That's so where did I actually find that video? Zoom. That's how so many windows are. Double, that's about as good as I can get it actually. All right, but we do have a slightly bigger window for you to actually see what's going on there. Um, now, 
Lincoln and I were talking about this before and there's some um, I guess there's not been much work done on this level uh, so I think we bought a cave <coughs> pack, didn't we? We bought a cave yeah. pack from Unreal to actually um, start building this. Um, but we haven't really had a sit down and a talk about story-wise what should be happening in this level. So there are some stairs uh, that uh, I think you can sort of see. I'd like to return to them there. Yeah, uh, it will get easier as we go into the other levels because the lighting changes. It's yeah. torch lit. This is quite dark, this one particular level. This is. We might have to... Uh, zoom forwards a little bit but uh, there are some stairs basically to the right of where I'm looking at the moment um, uh, with some carved statues and so forth and more of this cave has to be like that because this is quite close to the entrance there'd be lots of visitors here so um, for catering for visitors there would be paths a little bridge across the water maybe um, and yeah. yeah some other stuff that would make it um, at the moment, you walk down the stairs and you're straight into cave proper, where it's, it feels quite cavey. Whereas we want a, a slow transition as you descend down into the depth of it, that it's, it gradually gets darker and less wind, more mushrooms, damper. All those kind of things happen, as well as the colour change from moonlit blue tones all the way through the ranges of there might be levels that are quite red through to some very green zones and coming out at the end to your boss fight. So there's a real transition as you play through the game and specifically in colour tone, but also just in overall mood. And that's done in a variety of ways with the colour, the, the background sound, um, ambient effects like dripping water and things like that. All right, let's see where I can advance this <clears> to. <throat> uh, is this still in the same place? Yeah, that's, uh, that's still that first level. Still the first level. I think we moved you around a couple of times. So, oh, All right, right. okay. The ramp. Yeah. So, so this level is actually we've moved away from the. Um, oh, okay, so we've moved away from the um, the moonlit level, and we've moved to uh, a firelit level. So essentially, <coughs> the deeper you actually go, so I've come down that ramp. Um, in fact, we'll go up to the top a little while later so that you can see. But uh, I've come down that ramp and I'm um, I'm heading down the way I'm looking currently. Uh, you can see it's... some zombies walking yeah. along that ledge that are getting shot. Just where that, that little dot that you can see on the screen moving around is actually the, the eye focus point. So wherever he's looking, you can shoot. Yeah. Um, that's not necessarily how gameplay will be in the game. So we will be actually um, building for Vive controllers, Oculus Touch controllers, um, and uh, also uh, for a standard controller. So a standard controller might have something like this, although uh, we have yet to experiment and find out what we can offer. Um, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, I think I've told you about before is that uh, we've got Ragdoll um, physics actually happening on the zombies, but we don't have the physics constraints So you'll see as we shoot those zombies and they tumble off the edge that uh, They do in fact They do in fact look like they're made of rubber. They don't actually fall like a, yeah, they look exactly like a rubber chicken don't They <laughs> They do so they don't really look like a humanoid character at all um, and that's uh, uh, Quite funny for now, but of course we'll fix that up in the long run so they will look more humanoid um, and also at the moment the zombies when they come towards you they just hover um, they have no animation state aside from a standard sort of standing breathing animation so yeah. they hover towards you just breathing which is kind of funny to watch but obviously won't be the final look of how it's all put together yeah you'll notice there's no walking animation on them at all they're just sliding down that uh, that hill um, one of the things you'll notice about the physics though is um, the bullet does apply physics so if you shoot them in the head, they tend to um, fly backwards head first. Um, if you shoot them in the foot, they tend to fall forwards and collapse. And if you shoot them in the middle, they tend to fold up um, around mm. the middle. So surprising uh, how well that works. Yeah, that, that does work really well. Um, and again, it will look a lot better when the constraints are on. Uh, I have to say, watching this on the screen, um, it just it, it's nothing like actually watching it. Uh, for real, inside, uh, inside, inside VR. VR, 
uh, where um, like looking over that edge is quite overwhelming and yeah um, I've got a moderate fear of heights so when I look over that edge I actually feel a little bit queasy <laughs> uh, it has a definite effect on me um, uh, yeah it looks like it would be a nasty fall it's funny dropping the zombies over there that's uh, that's hilarious watching them <coughs> tumble down um, I really wish we could see it better that's uh, it's a shame that um, this has come out so dark and that we don't have a, a bigger screen of it um, anybody with any hints on how to actually get this screen bigger uh, something in in um, OBC or something would um, would be really handy at this point but um, in the future we'll try and record it as the active window not the whole screen it might help yeah would we have to keep changing that when um, when we when we start new levels maybe not sure. no 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 don't think so no. all right so might be able to skip forward to another i think we moved a couple of times in this level you went up the top top of the ramp of it and then back down the bottom okay so you're actually moving me now yeah, yeah. What, what you can see in the background is me actually in Unreal just grabbing the player start which is that uh, you can see that position that's got the XYZ axis on it and I'm actually moving it in the scene just so when we press play and, and relaunch the game the the character or yourself is at in a different position in the cave just a quick way to quickly reposition in this case so that's actually the spawn point so this, that's where this, I'll appear. Yeah, this was quite, uh, you were looking into a dark corner and you turn around. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's right down the bottom of the cave and there's the ramp heading off to the top right that he was standing on. Um, yeah, because these particular spawn points that I just moved it to has no lighting set up, it's, it's a little bit dark. So normally you'd have a couple of point lights around you to illuminate things. Um. Yeah, so looking at the floor of the cave there, uh, the floor is very realistic in places, but in places we've got some stretch artifacts, so they're things we're trying to fix up. Uh, the water works brilliantly, and when you get our little red reticule over uh, over the water in particular places, you actually get, um, what do you call it, diffraction? So yeah, you get refraction. Refraction, refraction, yeah. Uh, so also when the water is dropping from the ceiling that can happen so that's a really wonderful effect yeah, i don't know if it, whether it's a, one of those accidental happy occurrences but or whether it's actually the material properties of that layer interacting with the um the reticule layer but it definitely looks like it refracts through it which is kind of quite well, I surprising think they're doing some sort of perturbation of normals to actually get the, the water surface, I think. Yes, yeah, so the water would actually be perfectly flat, but yeah. they'll actually. So that probably is, is effectively digitally refracting through that layer by normals. Yeah. Yeah. I think this was. Oh yeah, we relocated the player spawn point to another part of the, that one cave. Okay, so this is where we went up the top. Yeah, you went up. Uh, you'll see me. See, yeah, that's on that. Yeah, we went right up the top, I think. Okay, yes, so, um, actually, didn't we stop on this ramp first, so I could see in all... I think you yeah. did one halfway up the ramp, and then yep. we went to the top, yeah. So yeah. now we're halfway up the uh, halfway up the ramp. A little bit higher up. Um, so down the bottom there, you can see where the bottom zombies were actually responding, yeah. and I'm now standing where I was shooting zombies off the ramp, and they were falling down. So in, the... in this level, there's two spawn points uh, for the zombies. The zombies spawn above you on the ramp and at the bottom of the ramp and come at you from two directions. So there they are, just yeah. above you, trying to come down. Um, I didn't have to shoot them, by the way. They're no danger to me at all, but it is fun um, watching them fold up and uh, act like rubber chickens, as uh, <coughs> Lincoln says. Uh, yeah, do enjoy watching them fold up. Yeah, at the moment we just have uh, what you call a, is it a nav? A nav, nav, nav. We've got a nav blocking volume set just below the player's feet, which have, has the effect of turning off the nav mesh just around your feet, which stops the zombies walking right up in your face and keeps them back yeah. about a metre away from you. Just um, while we're testing the builds and playing around with environment design, it means 
when you press play and have a look at the environment, you don't. Otherwise, the zombies come right up in your face, and you can actually look through their mesh. Um, get clipping going right through your camera um, if you don't keep them back a bit from you. Yeah. Which <coughs> yeah, does tend to destroy the realism a lot, and happens a lot in games. You've probably seen it, where you actually you know, your head sort of merges with the zombie's head. Um, and you, yeah, you get, yes. get to see that they're all hollow inside. It's a strange sensation yeah. when you put your head right through them and yeah. look up in, inside the mesh. So. Yeah, so something we definitely want to avoid. We're trying to avoid everything that causes any sort of uh, loss of immersion. So we really want you to be in there and feel that you are in fact in that world. And it's, I think it's, it's quite surprising now, even at even at this early stage, things aren't exactly buttoned down or super polished yet. But it's once, like you were saying, once you put the um, VR headset on, it is quite immersive, really. Yeah. Um, should we turn down the sound on that, or should we turn up the sound on the? Um, well, hmm. the capture. Because one of the things we can do is actually let people hear the sound of that wind in the cave that we've got going. Although that's not the final soundscape, that's just a placeholder for now, but let's yeah, turn up yeah, a little bit. Yeah, let them hear that. And have it just loud enough on our TV that we can hear it when it kicks in. I'm not sure. So uh, in the background you can see I'm repositioning the player start um, again. Right, so you should be able to hear background noise now. Because it's playing. Okay, anybody that's listening, you can let us know what the level of that is. We don't seem to be able to hear it the same. Has it gone quiet? I don't know. Anyway. <coughs> um, so have we moved again? Where are we now? Top, uh, the very top of the ramp. ramp okay, yeah, there. so now we're at the top of the ramp. So we're right at the zombie spawn point. Um, and up here, uh, you'll notice as I look around, you will see gaps in the um, cave. Uh, so these are essentially gaps in the mesh that uh, we've put together. So directly behind me, if I were to turn a turn around now in that movie, just um, yeah, there you go. There we go. You can see there's a big white space. That's just the outside world because the yeah. um, the cave sort of ceases to exist beyond that point. There's another one to my right and above my head. Um, which I'm not sure I've looked up at yet, but um, yeah. um, there, yeah, is, there it is. Just you just saw it come into the um, because uh, into view. inside Unreal, out, outside of this cave mesh, there's just obviously the void, um, which is filled with a skylight and there's a directional light and a bunch of other things. But that skylight's what's creating that white glow out there because the skylight's just set to probably straight white. Um, the idea behind that is you can turn off all of the all of the flame effects and all the light sources inside your cave or your room and you'll still be able to just see enough that it's not pitch black. Um, yeah. Try and one thing to, to avoid in a, an environment like this is pitch black because we found that as you're moving your head around from light source to light source you would get um, sections as you're turning your head where it would go to pure black which is never a good thing to have mm -hmm. because as you turn your head a little bit more and it catches the next light source you get a little bit of a jarring effect um. yeah yeah how long do we actually stay here for mm, not much yet. longer i think we must do yeah, anywhere so we're okay. jumping to a new level now which would be the atrium, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was basically the. There are more caves like that that are torch lit and so. Oh, well, this, this was that test room. Yeah. This is uh, again a torch lit room where um, the bare minimum have been done for this one. It was sort of a test room. So it's got the walls and the floor there and a couple of test lights and a spawn point for the zombies in the distance coming straight at you. Um, Again, you'll see a bright white light straight ahead. That's just where there's a big hole in the mesh, um, and the outside light has come coming in. Uh, that's one where I was, I was test, testing some water effects for uh, like a lake plane that you can add. So 
you'll see them looking around. Yeah. I don't think we st we don't stay this long here. So now we'll load um day trim. Okay, I just realised we actually pushed ourselves a little bit off the screen before. Uh, yeah. So next rule of uh, live streaming is don't fiddle with OBS once you've got it running because you do things and don't realise them. All right, so we can see a little bit of gl uh, green glow up here. So this is um, so we've got one torch in the distance and we've got a little bit of green glow. So um, yeah, this is kind of a transition room that you come through a couple of times during gameplay. Um, one of the exits to the room, you will see a little bit of a green glow, and when you came into this room, there'll be a bit of a red glow. So it's transitioning from a violet red zone to a more mushroomy, bioluminescent zone. Um, again, this is quite dark because it's such a big cavernous room. Yeah. Um, inside VR, it, you can see much more, obviously, but on a flat screen, you do lose some of the some of the clarity. Yeah, in effect, made worse by us not capturing that window, right? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's possible that you might be able to, at the captures point, um, specify a brightness. I don't know. Isn't that software? Uh, I'm not sure about that. But certainly, it just be, without all the high contrast stuff that's actually happening on the screen, like all those icons on the background and everything, and um, yeah. it would actually be a lot uh, easier for people to see the detail with it bigger and with less of that contrast actually happening. So <coughs> that's a thing we've learned for the best. Have you got your level plan here? Uh, I've got my prints out. Do you want to grab it's it off your desk? Because I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll show people how these levels actually work out. So, because essentially I think, um, I've mentioned before, the uh, when you first come into the cave system, there's lots of um, moonlit uh, stuff as there's you know holes in the ceiling and so forth and light sort of leaks in. Um, and that's the predominant lighting in there because um, without people and their torches around, you know, they've all run away from zombies and all the rest of it. Um, that's the, the only lighting there is. Uh, as you move down in the cave system, there are braziers and uh, things like that that actually provide fire lighting. Um, and uh, as you get to the, um, the very bottom level, you've got, um, as Lincoln said, some bioluminescent sources. So this thing is basically a, a, a plan of our levels. Um, and this is, uh, I'm not sure how close I can hold that, still make sense of it. But um, yeah, so in level one, we've sort of got this moonlit oh, the screen's level up. where we're um, uh, laying out caves basically underneath that. So you'll see this thing will um, get a lot more detailed uh, as we develop over time. But at the moment, we've got that one cave area that uh, you would have seen very darkly as we came in. Um, and then we'll actually fill in more caves, basically describing the level progress as we go through here. So on this side, the moon lit, in the second column is where we'll actually have the torch lit. And so we'll start slotting caves in there. And on the final edge, of course, is where we've got the bioluminescent um, areas. So we'll <coughs> pull all that in with uh, uh, all the caves that are going to be um, bioluminescent. And of course, the thing I guess we haven't mentioned, but we do show later in this video is uh, where the actual boss battle takes place. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it might be that I think you spend quite a while in that atrium going through a few different positions. It might be that you have to skip forward through it a bit. It is quite dark in there on the yeah. screen. Where are we at the moment? Um, probably still on the ledge. Okay, so this is this is where the the bridges are, right? The, so we were standing on the... Uh, there's zombies there, so you must be on that ledge. Though. So the first time you come through, you go along the ledge. Oh, right, yeah, okay. And then there's actually five viewpoints in that atrium. Let's skip ahead to a viewpoint that might be a little bit lighter. I think they're all quite dark. Oh, okay, you're going to skip ahead for us, okay. So this was you actually setting up the view again. Okay, so, yeah, so you can see we're on that ledge. 
boy, it's really nice to see it completely lit. <laughs> so I mean, the, the other camera. trick we could do is if we did do this, see, see there in the background how I've turned off the lighting, and it's mm -hmm. just uh, the mesh. It's much easier to see that's sort of in design mode where before you actually play it. Um, you can see the layout that there's a bunch of wooden platforms, and I'm just moving that position over to where those wooden platforms are. So there could be about three different viewpoints here at each end and in the middle of these wooden walk walkways. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually you go down a ladder and onto the ground floor of this, this mega cave. But you'll see once it hit play, it's quite dark because there's no light sources over on that side of the cave yet. It hasn't, hasn't really been set up for it. Okay. Yeah, it'll be very dark because you know, I think in a second I actually drag a point light into the scene because I realise it's just too dark. Um, what I could do though in the future is actually dra drag in a couple of big point lights and put them quite strong and it'll brighten the scene up. It won't look overly good when you play it, but in the background window on this it'll be much more visible. Okay. The layout inside the cave. Yeah, you can see one of those uh, holes in the ceiling of this cave and, and again <clears throat> um, that's quite unrealistic because this cave would be a good uh, good way underground, but uh, I think you saw it. Yeah, there yeah, we are. There it is. You can actually see light streaming in through um, that, that hole will be fixed up through that hole in the ceiling with a large band-aid. Yes. That's not meant to be there, that is a mistake because this cave would be way too deep for any light to be coming in from anywhere. Yeah, it's just a, literally a hole in the mesh. Yeah. Uh, you can see I'm just dragging a point light into the scene there, just yeah. in front of the player start. So it, it's enough to illuminate the thing in front of the player so that, and then I press play, and now Brooke can see in front of him that, okay, there's just some wood stuff there. Yeah, um, I became fascinated with that hole in the ceiling, though. Yeah, what what originally this cabin was full with a multitude of point lights. There might have been 50 odd of them um, while I was setting it up, and it quickly became evident that that was really probably bad practice. Ideally, you want a background <coughs> ambient light. It might only be five percent, but it's just enough light that it's not pitch black. Mm -hmm. And then you only have to put a limited number of point lights just to highlight focal areas. So as you look around, you can see points of interest to look at. I so, suppose we'll do one of those contrast tools that they actually have in games where you, you know, they tell people to adjust, adjust some mm. contrast control until you can just see these words in the background or you can just yeah, see this. Yeah. Um, I love those things because I always cheat the hell out of that because <laughs> I like to be able to see in the dark, so I just wind it right up. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, horrible cheat there. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing with the cave system is it's got to be it's got to be dark enough to be maybe a bit spooky, scary, keep you on edge, and maybe there's stuff comes at you out of the dark, but it can't be so dark that you simply can't see. Yeah. So it's a bit of a balance. You've got to carefully place point lights, or you'll see in later levels that we have bioluminescent um, fungus and mushrooms, and the eye, that it's not fully set up yet, but eventually parts of the walls will actually glow, and that's your background lighting that's you may have little points of interest that are patches of mushrooms and they happen to light an area that sort of visually is interesting yeah look down a hallway um we saw there that the difference between the point light that you placed in the scene to make that um, wooden bridge light and one that was actually bioluminescent and it's quite pardon me quite a stark difference the um yeah, the white light really doesn't belong there, and you realise that once you, mm. yeah, once you turn your head and, and have a look around, that uh, yeah, that light really doesn't belong. So I think from here, from memory, you, have, you haven't gone down onto the ground level yet, and it's quite dark on the ground. So I don't know whether it's cases skipping forward fractionally, but no, we can give it a go. Just try and find where my mouse is. Are we on the ground yet? Yeah, okay, so this is where you're setting up on the ground? No, it's still above, because you're looking down on those those torches. Aren't you dropping me down? It looks like I'm there we go. down. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. selecting there we the go. player start again. These wooden bridges are sort of floating a good 10 metres above the, the cave base. So now I'm moving the player start down, uh, turning off the lighting so I can see what I'm doing. And, positioning it roughly near the ground somewhere mm -hmm. um, and then I think we hit play in a minute can't remember whether it was too dark for you to see anything down there without a point light well what I did do when I got down here was I looked up so that I could see the underside of the bridges yeah that's right 
um, and that's what I'm looking at now so I'm not sure how much you can see out there when you're watching the stream but um, I'm essentially looking up on uh, that screen there you can see it uh, yeah. a bit better than on this little yeah. laptop screen but that's kind of yeah you can see those little those striations is the underside of a wooden walkway with a point light above it so you're getting a bit of light hitting the gaps between each wooden plank yeah it's a bit hard to describe something when it's really it is <laughs> it's pitch black with a bunch of little highlights of point lights but um might be able to see a bit more in the next cave because we head into the bioluminescent zone which is a bit more green glowing. Okay. So let me try again to <clears throat> sort of advance this a bit. So here we are in one of the green glowing zones. Um, oh, there's a time delay. I'm looking at that screen. <laughs> It's confusing. Uh, and as I just turn to the right there, and to the left in fact, you can see all these little firefly particle effects that are going on. Um, so those those firefly effects really help to sell the level, I think. Um, we have uh, not only um, green fireflies, we have some smaller blue glow worms, I think you were calling them. But yeah. yeah. But they were in the air rather than on the cave wall, so <clears throat> maybe they're fireflies. Um, so again this greeny sort of zone the idea is it's probably getting close to the deeper parts of the catacombs yeah. so you, you've gotten less well there's yeah it's, it's definitely a, in the end result it should be the darkest dampest most confined possibly the creepiest and yeah sort of um overall the most moody and creepy zone yeah that's the, you should have the full force of claustrophobia yeah yep. Yep. Um, you know, realizing there's a lot of rock on top of you uh, and you're in a very narrow confined space the ceilings through uh, much of this area in fact you'll see in the next area I think that the ceilings get quite low and those low ceilings really help to sell the idea of claustrophobia to you mm. um, so when I'm in there I start to feel that as well I start to feel a little bit um, pressed in on I do love those glowworms. I hope they're actually showing for the viewers. You can see them on that screen. Yeah. But um, I think this the laptop screen's a bit harder because the screen's just a bit duller. But it might be that in the actual Twitch stream that it... Or even on the laptop screen, I can sort of see. Yeah. yeah. Might be that at the other end, when you're viewing it on a LCD again, it might be brighter. Yeah. So what gave you the idea, because I don't think anybody even discussed Fireflies at uh, level design time, so what sort of gave you the idea of... Um, at the time, I, well, when I started working on this zone, I knew, I kind of already knew that, again, going back to this, that we would have our three tonal ranges, so moonlit, blue, torchlit, sort of oranges and reds, and then the sort of bioluminescent was always going to be something greenish, kind of glowing. Um, I was thinking about how can we introduce bioluminescence and I think I just googled caves bioluminescence those two words and the first few hits were like um, there's certain breeds of rare mushrooms that glow a little bit and then obviously I got hits on glowworms and um, fireflies and that's kind of when it was like okay that's that's perfect because we need little little effects can be quite um, effective even if it's only a patch of say 10 little glow uh, fireflies just hovering around randomly it adds so much life to the scene from just being rocky cave walls yeah um so uh, yeah they certainly do add uh, yeah and we needed I, the core thing i knew we needed in this area was something that glowed so probably the primary thing when we get it going properly will be the mushrooms at the, yep. at, at the moment there are mushrooms in there I can see them on the scene I can see kind of there in the background yeah we're just coming up there's a the barrel now. there with some mushrooms in the wall crevice behind it yeah and some um, so and there's a patch there just on top of that rock that's glowing green right there um, yep. 
So that's probably the core lighting thing in this whole zone is, is these little patches of green and it, it's kind of a three phase thing where there's the mushrooms but there's also moss and then there's green lights mm -hmm. and obviously the idea is wherever these little little pools of green light are there might be a few little what do we call them fireflies yeah <laughs> sort of just hovering around and i can see them there and it's enough visual in interest that you can kind of it kind of just um turns what could be a very flat cave into something a bit more interesting visually yeah obviously there's there's a lot going on visually already with zombies running at you and whatnot but that stuff in the background is what can be the difference between a, a scene that's okay and a scene that's like oh this is really cool i feel i feel immersed in it if you know what i mean yeah i think you're pointing out to me here that we're actually looking at in that wall behind those zombies there is a niche that it's a vertical niche with a coffin in it yeah and uh i guess we would yeah, we were debating whether or not whether or not it would be possibly a standing niche for a uh, sort of like a zombie soldier, sort of a Napoleonic soldier holding yeah. a, a bayoneted weapon or maybe a, a scabbard or something like that. But it didn't really fit the story because what would you no yeah what would you be doing with a dead guy <laughs> stuck in a vertical niche pretending um, to guard things? Oh, there's that water effect. I think here you really get to see the the um, Fraction yeah, and in the back there, around that side behind me, is um, I was experimenting with some water particle effects and yeah. um, some of the stuff released by Epic through their Soul Cave um, pack, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Um, there's some pretty good blueprints in there. Well, that's the next thing we got, wasn't it? After we bought that cave pack, we <coughs> buying Soul or getting Soul Cave yeah, is and, a free thing, I think. And when you, when you, I guess when you're starting out. Um, assembling stuff like this, the, the the free content packs from Epic are quite handy because it has the blueprints. You can import those and then customize them to suit what what you think how they'll work for your scene. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a marvelous boost um, when you're starting off developing a game to be able to just grab this stuff and put it together. Yeah. Um, and start yeah start customizing uh, things. Uh, yeah, so the vertical niche we decided uh, is not going to have any sort of soldier in it. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's sort of interesting in Skyrim for having a Drogger in, but um, they sort of fit the story there because they were manufactured specifically or, or you know, created specifically. Mm. Niches were provided for them knowing that they would be there, but nobody knew there was going to be zombies, so nobody could in this game, so... Yeah, Nobody could have really planned a spot for a zombie to stand. It's one of those things you always got to be thinking about, I guess, is um, if you were building a total, I mean, while this is somewhat fantasy, obviously, it's zombies, mm -hmm. there's still, it's still grounded a little bit in reality that mm -hmm. it's based on the idea of a catacomb. And it's a, what do they call it? Suspension of disbelief? Yeah. Um, you kind of want the player still to, as they're playing, even if it was a fantasy game, to in the back of their mind go, oh, I know what this kind of thing is. I've seen photos of catacombs before on the internet, I know. Yeah. And if you break that suspension of disbelief by putting in something that just doesn't make sense, that can kind of ruin the whole immersion. Well, yeah. I guess that's what I'm getting at. So something as simple as, oh, you go, okay, it would be cool to put in a vertical niche that's just the right size for a soldier to stand in. But then when you think about it, okay, back in the 1600s or whenever 1800s, they, 1800s, 1800s whenever they dug this cave, this uh, cave system out. Oh, sorry, yes, this lower cave system was much earlier, wasn't it? Yeah, it'd be so. earlier than the 1800s, it could be yeah. from the 1200s or something. Yeah. That um, I guess when they built it, they didn't know there were going to be zombies in it, so why would they build it a vertical niche? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Unless the only logical reason is maybe there was going to be a small, maybe... Built for a human, as possible. Yeah, maybe like a statue or a, some kind of a little, um, what do you call it, when they put candles and light things and uh, Like a little altar thing. Like right? a little altar or something was in there for people who are visiting loved ones in the deep part. I, I don't know. There has to be a reason behind everything, I, I guess is what I'm getting at. That you can't just put stuff to suit the gameplay yeah. and it doesn't really make sense in reality. So. Yeah. So it's got to, it's absolutely got to fit the story. I think you're moving me around here, but one of the things I noticed, and we were having a discussion about it while we were um, going through this level, was <clears> the floor has actually got some problems. So yeah, that um, when I created this level, the whole 
a large majority of the floor is actually one rock, well, massive boulder, mm -hmm. and it's just been scaled up and stretched just to fill in the floor area so that um, it was a bit flatter. Obviously that creates some problems as soon as you scale it up, all the textures on it get stretched, and actually yeah. when you're inside the VR and you look down at your feet, the floor does look a bit, yeah, it, a bit yuck. So. All the walls look absolutely real, they look fantastic, but the floor actually looks like a video game yeah, floor. Yeah. So, so um, that's the, I mean, that's something that should be relatively easy to fix, because what we'll do is just the, the offending rock or texture will just be deleted and then re replace in its place something that's a bit smaller. Um, and the beauty of inside Unreal, you can get one rock, for example, let's say it's sort of a flat-sided rock with a little bit of a crack in it or something, you, if you scale it up a little bit to a point that can handle it before the texture blows out, you can then just duplicate that rock three or four times and just sort of push them into each other and it does a marvellous job of merging those two rocks to a point where it just looks like a bigger rock, but it's actually the same rock duplicated and just okay. rotated a bit. I just noticed um, we're having a look at the coffins there and the coffins and the walls I think are, are wonderful. Um, uh, despite the fact that the handles are actually hanging the wrong way. But, yeah, yeah. but um, I wonder if we can even skip back to that uh, just a little bit earlier. And just, yeah. So there's the coffins in the walls. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. I, th I think or or originally because I think, oh, where did I get those? The coffin was, uh, again, a, it was a free asset from, actually, from the Unity store, which I imported and then um, did a quick play around with it inside Maya, inside a um, 3D application, and I made a couple of different variants of the coffin. So there's a variant where it's actually the full coffin, there's a variant where it's a coffin with no lid. Mm -hmm. and there's just the lid by itself so we've got three assets there that we can drop into a scene um, at the moment it's still the default textures and stuff and there's there's some stuff on it on its side that needs to be cut off the mesh like some chains that are oddly hanging horizontally yeah because it, I guess it was originally modeled to be standing up maybe yeah, yeah. I would say that was the case so it made to stand up but uh, I, I guess they're all little things that if, if that um, if that asset still remains in the final version of the game, then it will have to be cleaned up and, and so on. I wonder on. how much of that stuff you can put under physics control before you start blowing out the frame rate. So I oh, like have chains that are just yeah, hanging that they can get chains pumped. Chains that are hanging, so yeah. if you knock a coffin over, the chain actually moves. The, yeah, the I guess you can, you can try and add it. Um, at the moment, these scenes, when we look at the frame rate, they seem to be hovering around 110, 120 um, frames per second. Yeah. So obviously for VR, you're hoping to aim around nothing under 90. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, they're, um, they're pretty good. There's one scene in particular is, is about 80, 90, and that's just because it's got too many flames, and I went a bit crazy and added flames and stuff all over the place, and it's, every time you add a particle system, it seems to kill things. So. Yeah. Um, Beware of artists going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah I that, guess that, the trick is for the programmers to try and give you what you want to see, but uh, do it in a way that doesn't cost so much CPU and GPU wise. Yeah, and that's the danger of knowing a little bit, not but not knowing as much as a programmer has has a levelly. I guess I'm effectively doing level design, where I'll just try and make it look marvellous and throw all the cool effects at it and then when you play it, it might play alright, but you've got to factor in that at some stage there might be, instead of five zombies coming at you, there might be 20 zombies plus a large rock might be animated to be moving and there might be an explosion happening here and you might have the player riggers lifting a crossbow and it's all little things that are going to soak up frames per second. So. Okay, that's something we don't actually have at the moment is a player rig, so all we can see is this reticule that we're currently using to uh, aim at the zombies, but mm. uh, I understand the player rig is underway, so it will be very interesting to see that Yeah. Uh, in the game. So in the, I guess in the, the final, what we anticipate the final gameplay experience will be like, it will be 
um, a case where, I mean at the moment when you're in VR you can't see your own body, so you look down and you can't see anything, mm -hmm. you're invisible. So obviously once we add the rig in you'll be able to see your forearms and your legs and you'll be able to lift the weapon as you lift up the touch controllers in your hands. Yep. Um, you should be able, for example, as I lift this hand up you should be able to see inside VR the pistol or whatever you're holding in your hands coming up and you should be able to look down the iron sights on the pistol and actually shoot through it. Yep. So it should be quite a, a much closer to reality shooting experience. Actually this is one complaint I've heard about Fallout 4. I love Fallout 4, I'm a big fan. I haven't yet played the VR version and I'm told the VR version is fantastic but it does have some issues and one of the things that is disappointing for those people that really like to snipe is um, trying to look down a scope. Mm. Um, it's not the same effect as uh, basically taking over the whole visual part of the screen and you yeah, know, expanding true. things for you. Um, you're actually trying to look down this little... It's kind of like looking down a toilet roll, holding yeah. it here, where you can still see the world around you, whereas yeah. in reality when you do look down a scope, you push your eye against it, so you, you black out the environment around you. Don't, you don't, know. Well, you hold it back, yeah, otherwise you get a black eye. That's right, you yeah, do yeah. get a black eye. I'm used to only shooting 22 guns, which don't yeah. really kick. They don't have the, the recoil, <laughs> but no, if you're using a, yeah, yeah. a sniper rifle, you're going to hold your head way back, otherwise uh, you're going to get a... Get a black eye, <laughs> get, get a little, get a little eye. ring. In fact, it can cut a piece out of your eye, so I've seen lots of those on YouTube. Um, <laughs> with uh, people getting a nice circular cut around the eye yeah. as they're trying to, yeah, as they push their eye against the thing. Apparently you only do it once and it's so painful you never do it again. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I so guess that's the end goal at least is that the inside VR, the actual shooting experience will be as close to maybe standing at a, um, a pistol range, you know, where you're actually having to lift the weapon and actually sight down the weapon instead, yeah. of, instead of just holding button X to aim and then button Y to shoot and you've got not much other control. It's do we have any scope weapons in this game? Uh, well, we haven't talked about it, have we, really? Uh, there was talk of scoping a... Oh, that's right, his, his rifle... Oh, that's right, that's the crossbow. The crossbow was going to have a scope, but I'm not sure if that was going to be a scope or just a ringed iron sight that you could look through on the front of the weapon. Yeah. It's just like a, you know, a, a metal ring that is enough of a sight that you can look through it, like that. So these are points to be decided, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it certainly would be interesting to have uh, a scoped weapon in there. I know we've got um, his rifle, Elias's his. rifle in there. Uh, Elias being the player, the character that you're playing in the game. Um, we do have his rifle in there, and that rifle does have a scope. So we might actually have to mm. solve the question of how to use a scope well in VR. Um, remembering, of course, we're not just in VR. You're actually going to be able to play this game. Yeah, you will be able to play it with, um, I guess the primary, it'll, it'll be designed primarily for holding the touch controllers from the chance, you know, you might, yep. but you will also be able to play it with just like a, like a, what do you call it, motion controller, like a PlayStation mm -hmm. style controller. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, we've um, actually come to uh, this is, yeah, this the is boss level. Our, um, it's currently a mock-up of the boss level. Um, Primarily because our model of Sergio just finished the the King Leon um, mesh there for textured. For those of you that were watching yesterday's stream, <coughs> um, that uh, big fellow uh, to the right there is King Leon, and uh, he was we actually just placed him in this level just to get some comparison for his size against um, the other zombies because he's supposed to stand at least a. Yeah, a foot taller than anybody I else think, around him. I think in the end it was something like two meters ten or something or thereabouts. Um, going by the fact that I, like Sergio was saying, how big do we want this guy? Again, that's it's quite a balancing trick because those generic zombies that just ran up next to him, they're just under two meters. Mm -hmm. So we want him to be imposing and dangerous, but it's that fine line. If I, if we made him two meters thirty, he might look ridiculous. ridiculous yeah. Or you, we don't want him to look like a giant. We want him to look like a very large man that's believably large. So. Yeah. Yeah. So he was a conqueror. Um, you know, so he would have been, you know, one of the alphas in his group and therefore likely to be a tall, strong person. 
Um, so yeah, I don't think it's out of the bounds of possibility that it was a foot taller than mm. most of the Victorian guys that uh, uh, that he's coming up against. Uh, and this, I think I was talking about it earlier, this is a good example of a scene where I've just thrown in some very frame heavy particle effects. Those big um, braziers that are burning on the ground. Yeah. While they look cool, they do soak up a lot of um, performance. So uh, whether or not all, all of those braziers end up in the final scene, we'll see. But it just depends how it plays out. I do love the sparks flying from there. That was, they're, they're pretty cool. There's, also, there's, there's effectively three particles happening on each of those braziers. One of them is just like a glow effect. Another one is... Actually, there's four. There's a glow effect. Are you shaking your leg? That's my leg. A particle effect that's emitting the sparks. There's another um, group that's actually generating smoke coming off it. And um, uh, there's also the, the spark emitter is also emitting sparks that pop and fall out against gravity the other way. So you get these little embers that drop. So it's quite a nice effect. Okay, let's see if we can go back there into that. It's back to the start, is it? Yeah, just go back there. Yeah, yeah so the yeah the, the embers actually <coughs> um, flying above the flame. It just I mean it looks beautiful. The sparks coming off. Uh, um, yeah, I wonder what we can do for um, minimum price there in terms of. Uh, yeah, performance. there'll be some debate on this level, being it's the boss level in terms of lighting um, because the rest of the game we've decided to go with these three sort of mood styles we've got moonlit torchlit and bioluminescent mm -hmm. we could go one or two ways maybe the boss fight thing at the end has got its own lighting yeah um, maybe it's got a golden glow and it's a totally different feeling thing or maybe when you get to the end it's like all three zones in one room there might be some torchlit um, sconces on the wall and maybe a shaft of moonlight and some cr moss creeping along the floor so you've got elements of all three zones so these are all decisions to be made but for now we've got you know a test room and enough there that we can start putting assets in there and seeing how they how they behave so it's quite good yeah um, I did quite like the idea of gold in there. His, um... Yeah, and that's what I'm wondering is it might be better if we get rid of this big raised dais platform. Maybe there's just a big stone sarcophagus and he's got his weapon rack next to that and maybe there's lots of goblets and golden objects. From trying to remember the, um, the scene in the book, I do, uh, do believe it. There mentions, was a sarcophagus, wasn't there? Yeah, a sarcophagus and a weapons rack and it did mention that initially when the guy comes into the room he thought that it was just like a suit of armor on a stand that yep. was motionless and then suddenly it starts moving and comes at him so yep. he realizes oh it's actually a kit to you know it's an enemy not just a suit of armor yeah um, he doesn't quite fit that because you can see by his arms and yeah stuff like that that he's real but yeah so we so I'm almost, straight a bit from the story. <coughs> I'm almost thinking that that level, oh, when it gets redesigned, maybe we strip out that platform and the dais and all the stairs. It might be just a flat floor, but maybe, like I said, he's got a sarcophagus that's made of maybe something like white marble or something. And maybe there's a lot of treasure in the room or objects that, you know, what, like a lot of kings, they get buried with... If yeah, you, if you look at the Egyptians, objects of veneration you know, and stuff you know, like, like that. Egyptians getting buried with, with half their army and all these ships and carts and all kinds of things. So it could be that the room's full of things that are glowing golden or something. Yeah. We'll have to play around with that, but probably not a high priority until we um, get more of the... Look at the crack in that rock. That is so real. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's um, that's pretty much all we uh, we have to talk about today. Yeah. So I've dragged you away from um, <laughs> concept art and level design um, for an hour or so. Uh, time, actually. Basically, that yes, that's uh, 1:53 now. So, a few minutes, so. Um, uh, unless there's any questions or anything like that, uh, I think that's us pretty much done for the day. Um, 
so what you've seen, although you've seen it darkly, I guess, is uh, now uh, the beginning of, of our level design. Um, so we haven't got all our props in or anything, but you've seen the three basic cave types, so the moonlit type, the um, brazier lit uh, areas, and the um, bioluminescent uh, algae and lichen lit areas. Um, so so yep. you know, fungi, mushrooms as well. The fungi uh, zone. Yeah, and fireflies. Um, uh, I guess, and you've heard us talk about, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, <coughs> that constrain us when we're actually doing these levels, including believability from the story point of view. So making sure that the story uh, is, uh, well, the the level design is consistent with things that actually happen in the story, um, and more importantly, is consistent with the reality of the story world. So um, well, I think we spoke, well, we spoke quite a lot about the vertical niche being a place where a, um, a zombie guard could be, and that wouldn't make sense in our story world because there were no zombies until uh, uh, until things went to hell, mm. <laughs> essentially. So it's a good, probably a good example of sometimes you have good ideas, but just because it's a good idea doesn't mean it's the right idea for that game, so. Indeed. Yeah. All right, so we'll be back on again at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Um, not sure what we're doing yet. Um, I will probably actually uh, see if I can get a lightened up version of some of those, uh, just segments of those movies and um, play them for you and tell, tell you what they are. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll probably have, uh, I think we've got Margaret back tomorrow. Margaret's currently on a um, entrepreneurial uh, women in tech conference of some sort, I think. Um, she gets asked to do a lot of these things, um, so she's a bit of a mover and shaker out there. Um, uh, yeah, so she'll be back in tomorrow, and um, yeah, we'll be uh, doing some more stuff. Um, we want to do some more stuff on marketing, but we also want to make some videos. You're going to do some modelling videos, weren't you, of um, yeah, of that. Guy, what are we calling him? Bony. Cross-eyed Joe. Cross-eyed Joe, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we've got a zombie called Cross-eyed Joe. Um, you have seen Lincoln do a bit, little bit of the um, uh, orthographics of him. We're going to follow along on his journey over the next few weeks, basically as he goes through modelling um, and texturing, rigging and animating. Um, so you'll see the complete uh, evolution of Cross-eyed Joe. Um, but in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow at 1pm. Uh yeah, so that's me signing off for now. Uh, so yeah. I was actually just fumbling there trying to find out where I put OBS so I could actually turn the stream off. Okay, cheers, see you. Right.